called Erichmeria linearifolia, or commonly known as Mojave Goldenbush. Now, the thing that I'm really interested in is how plants, unlike animals and humans, they're sessile organisms, so they can't run away from a predator, or they can't, you know, escape from, you know, a dangerous environment, a dry environment. So what they do is they have the secondary metabolism going on within them, which produces compounds. And it's these compounds that I am interested in, because it's these compounds that aid the plant with its interactions with its environment whether it be with another plant or you know, herbivores or helping it live better in a dry community. So the Mojave golden bush that I looked at, it's native to southern Utah and the southwest region. But what we did in order to get the compounds used to look at how they act against bacteria, we get the plant material and we subject it to steam distillation. The steam liberates the compounds that are in it, the molecules, so that they are released and then condensed in this collection vial. So once we have the oil, which most people know as essential oil, we then wanted to test it against bacteria. Most scientists have looked at how it works against known bacteria. You know, you've got your streptobacillus or streptococcus or the um, just many different human pathogenic bacteria. But we wanted to look at how it acted with its own root associated bacteria. So we collected soil samples from around the roots of the plant in around the roots of other plants within its same community and then also from just the soil in its community but not associated with any roots so any plants at all and that way we could test how the plant has evolved to fight off the bacteria in its own environment around its own roots rather than the bacteria around another plant's roots or not around plants at all so we used what's called the Kirby Bauer disk diffusion assay. It's a common screening tool to test the, the strength or the potency of the essential oil. With it, we just spread bacteria over an auger base. And in the center of it, we place a filtered disk or little round dot where we put the oil and then we let the bacteria grow. Now if the oil had no antibacterial properties, there would be no inhibition. We, the term we use is inhibition zone, the area around the disc where the bacteria doesn't grow. So with the oil we tested, we had a large inhibition zone. So it showed great results. It showed that this plant produces compounds that have very strong antibacterial properties. I've done it with other plants from southern Utah and it's been rare for me to come across one that has them this large. Most have been very small. So then we looked at it, you know, using a normal statistics program and looked at how each of the different communities where we had the bacteria from how it was best fought off by this oil. And we were able to see that our hypothesis was correct, that the essential oils from the plant fight best against its own soil bacteria from around its roots than around the bacteria around its neighbor's roots. The, what made it interesting is, like I said, we were looking at the bacteria from its own environment. So with this, we had to look at the morphology of the bacteria to try to get a pure, a pure colony of bacteria. So we would grow the bacteria, isolate what looked like, let's say, a 
cream colored bacteria, grow it again, isolate it, grow it again. So we wanted to get as pure as we could get. And in the end, we used gram staining to look at the bacteria, see what we had. And lastly, I just wanted to talk about how we also used a gas chromatograph and mass spectrometer to look at the compounds within the oil. Like I said before, this is what I really care about, is the compounds that these plants produce to fend off their, you know, their predators, you could say, or help them survive. Now, the highest yield, the compound with the highest yield was limonene. Limonene is already known as an antibacterial compound. It's used in 15 different pesticides, household, environmentally friendly pesticides. But one that it's not mentioned here in the poster is beta carophyllene. The reason why that has stood out to me is because it's used, there's been research on that compound and its potential as an anti-inflammatory and pain reliever. So I'm really into medicine and the use of these compounds in medicine to aid the human body. So this further research that I will be doing will be looking at the gene responsible for that compound and the potentially using it or potentially using that gene, inserting it into bacteria and producing the compound by other means than from the plant itself.